Bruchem Aboim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's topic will be what we call uh, Shiduchim. Shiduch is a match, a marital match. A shatkin is a matchmaker. And um, so let's deal with the basic question. Okay, we're going to get to is uh, our main thing is going to be why is it difficult for some people, easy for others, but basically why get married at all? So the first commandment that was given by us to us by God in the Torah is the command to have children and that necessitates marriage and it's really a natural desire we see animals procreate and there's also a feeling for people to want to recreate who they are certain ego that we see as well now it's interesting that Sex was really, we think of it as uh, recreation, but in reality, the reason why God gave it to us was for procreation. There are three things that God made pleasurable. Food, sleep, and sex. These are all necessary for life, so therefore, God made them enjoyable. It's interesting, uh, with children, you have to coax them to eat, you have to do the same when it comes to sleep. When we get older, you know, we uh, want to overeat and oversleep. It's an amazing thing, but they're enjoyable. If a person doesn't eat for a while, goes on an IV, many times they find it to be very, almost inconvenient, painful uh, to chew, to swallow. So these are things we take for granted. So God made this, again, pleasurable, so we see it more as a recreation. But the whole idea of marriage was really procreation. And why is this important? It's interesting, during uh, political campaigns, abortion becomes a major issue. One of the ways that we bring in Mashiach, the Messiah, is actually when God created the world, he created everything at the, that moment of creation, including all the souls that would be born. And one of the ways of bringing the Messiah is to use up all these souls. That's why religious individuals usually have large families, or at least try to. Again, it's in the hand of God. But when all these souls are used up, then we, that would be another way of bringing in the Messiah. An interesting sign, by the way, of the Messiah coming in this last year, 2015, there were more twins born than ever before in history. That, again, this God moving it quicker, trying to get more children born to use up these souls. Now, marriage is really a sacred institution. It's called Kedushin or Nisuin. Kedushin from the world sanctified. And Nisuin elevated. Um, children that are brought up in strong family units uh, have great benefits. I have role models, values, morals, support system. Uh, societies that have this idea of marriage are usually much better in all that they do uh, in, on every count. Now, According to the Torah, what's interesting is this mitzvah, this commandment to have children is only for a man. Women are, interestingly enough, not commanded to get married. And yet they do. Not only that, they have children, which they're not commanded to do. And we see that women are a much higher spiritual level. They don't have to be commanded to do so, yet they do. And they volunteer to have children. If men were the ones to have children, be lucky if they had one, they definitely wouldn't have two. Uh, but women, amazingly, on because of who and what they are, they are the true givers of society. Now, the Maral of Prague, a great rabbi who lived in the 1500s, um, there is a holiday of Sukkot. We shake the lulav and esrik. And in order to buy it, you have to own it. It has to be yours. And he would buy his lulav and esrik only with the money that he received from being a matchmaker, from being a shatkin. So we see how difficult it is to find matches for people. In fact, one of the questions that are asked about God Almighty himself, what does he do now that he's created the world? And we say that what he does is he makes matches, uh, which is not an easy thing to do, to bring two different individuals together, to form a whole. And we say it's as difficult for God to make a match as it is to split the sea, called Kriyas Yamsuf. And it's called Kriya to tear and not cut. If you cut, 
a thousand pieces of paper, you can bring them all together, one with the other. It makes no difference which one's which. On the other hand, when you tear, that other end will only fit the opposite end. So bringing a match together or fitting those two pieces together with all their little jagged edges so they fit completely. So you know that Adam, when he was created, was both male and female. So bringing a man and woman together creates that bond that was in creation when man was first created. Now, what's interesting is we've talked about in other lectures of A's and B's, of opposites attracting. And it's, I'm not so sure that it's, that opposites attract as much as many times you admire someone who has qualities that you don't have. And that's what you're attracted to. So if it's a talent, then that makes a lot of sense. Someone can do something you can't do. They're gifted in a certain way and you admire that. And, but sometimes what it's really about is a personality trait. That person has a personality trait that you admire and you should really be doing the same thing. But instead, you attach yourself to someone who's doing that, and in this way, you've taken care of it, which is wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, you need to be more like that person. And that's really what God orchestrates in A's and B's. That by being around someone who has a better personality trait than you have, many times you come to take on that trait. And it's interesting, just like married people many times become to almost look alike. And so, too, they begin to act alike. So it's not just the talents, because talents are something you may not take over, but personality traits. You may well learn to find to become a better person by being around a person who has that better trait. Now, but the real question becomes, why is finding a mate so difficult? And to that, there's some interesting answers. Number one, on a religious level, we know that he was commanded if he does something is greater than he was not commanded. Which means, let's say someone takes a, a piece of food, an apple, and he makes a blessing on it. And someone answers to that blessing, amen, meaning true. So who's greater? The person who makes the blessing on the apple or the person who's not eating the apple but still makes the blessing on it? Now I would think the person who volunteers and is not having any enjoyment but says amen might be greater. The answer is no, because he's not commanded, just like a woman. If a woman does not have, a, have the commandment and she does something, she has reward for it. But he who is commanded is greater because the Satan stands in the way of that person to try to stop him. When you're commanded, the Satan now tries to stop you. If you're not commanded, he doesn't. So the roadblocks aren't there. So one of the reasons why it's so difficult to find a mate is because since it's such a great mitzvah, the Sutton, the Yetzirah, tries to stand in the way to make things very difficult, to find ways to stop the person from getting married, making foolish mistakes, saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. And a person needs to know that you have to be strong and stalwart in what you're doing to make sure that it works. But think about it. You walk into a, in fact, there's in, in, there are window dressers. People, that's their whole job. All they do is make sure that at a store, they make sure that what's facing the street draws people into the store. Window dressers. You walk into a supermarket. Really, they could just put cases of food all over the place. Instead, they put displays out. Why? Because there's something about presentation. Food, people eat with their eyes. But you really don't eat with your eyes. But if it looks good, it tastes good. If it doesn't look good, it doesn't taste good. And so, too, when it comes to a shidduch, when it comes to trying to find a mate, it's interesting, people, I've seen people at gatherings where they meet other singles, and it's like true confessions. The people tell each other their negative traits. You know, I'm not married because this, that, and the other. Well, but that's not how you sell something. Everybody has good traits and bad traits. I mean, to think that someone's perfect would be ridiculous. No one's perfect. So just like a, when you're going to sell a product, you know, you try to show its good points, not its bad points. And yet when it comes to marriage many times, there are people that just sink the ship before it even gets off, get going, by virtue of telling someone, kind of saying, you don't want to marry me because of such and such and such and such. Instead of putting your best foot forward. And not only that, if you think something about you is a negative, why not try and change it? 
And even if it's, you still have that negative, it may not be as bad as it was before and doable. And nothing is more admire, admirable of a person and so you have to, be able to admire someone. If you see that they're trying to be better, that means that they're, they're putting an effort into becoming better. Not only that, we find that <laughs> it's like people are trying to marry the princess. You know, there's certain things a person needs to be looking for the wrong person in the wrong place. You need to have some idea of what you're looking for. And it doesn't mean settling. That's not a good way to look at things either. Even though I think people, I think it's not settling so much as people becoming realistic. Many times what people want, um, <laughs> you'll see people that are very much overweight. But they want someone that's very in trim and in shape. <laughs> You know, it really doesn't make sense. Get yourself in shape. You know, if you want someone and you're going to marry someone who is in shape, why should you be out of shape? It doesn't make sense. Yet that's what people do. Why didn't you like that woman? Yeah, she wasn't, she wasn't good looking enough. What do you look like? Well, that's got nothing to do with it. You know, and you have to be somewhat realistic in what you're, what you're looking for. And not only that, many times what we look for is the exterior instead of the interior. Well, guess what? Beauty gets old. Outer beauty, inner beauty, only gets more beautiful. So when you're looking for someone, look for values. That we see in the Torah, two people married for what was pleasant in their eyes. Yehuda, and that brought him two sons that wound up dying. And Shimshon, Samson, with Delilah. He married what was pleasant in his eyes, and the Philistines took his eyes out. A person needs to look beyond physical beauty to get to know someone. You know, it's amazing how someone very beautiful when you first meet them can become very ugly. And someone who seems very plain can become very beautiful. And not only that, smile. For God's sake, smile. When people smile, they already look better. Now, another reason why it, it's difficult to find a mate is God wants you to pray to him. He wants to be part of the equation. We see that the mothers of Israel are all barren, three out of the four. Why? Because God wants them to pray. But what do, what do righteous women do but pray? The answer is not the same way as when they really want something. If you really want to find a mate, you need to make God part of the equation. And when you make God part of the equation, make God relevant, then all of a sudden you may find, strangely enough, that he will help you. And somehow it will happen. But you need to make yourself fit to that other part because the two you have to fit. So if you're not finding your mate, it may be because you're not doing what you need to do, and they need to do what they have to do. But there's also one way, a trick, so to speak. If you want something, then pray for someone else. So if you want to, be, to find your mate, pray for someone else who's also looking for a mate. We see that Abram Avinu, that Abraham wanted children, and it wasn't until he prayed for someone else that God blessed him with a mate, with a child. That's when the blessing came. When he prayed for someone else, he was answered first. I've told this to people who want children and want a mate. Always pray for someone else because the prayers you give for someone else are answered. And when they're answered, many times the first person who's really answered is you. So again, you need to go past yourself. And again, don't make yourself a chameleon. Be who you are, just make yourself a better you. But don't try to be who that person what that person wants because you won't keep it up. And then what you're going to do is just build yourself a problem of, God forbid, divorce. Be who you are. Be a better you. Work on being a better you. And sell yourself as something that you would want to be with. And when you do that, then you have a much better thing. But always be kind. There's no greater magnet than kindness. Be kind. Be warm. Be giving. Go past yourself even when you don't want to. It's not what you want to do, it's what you should do. That's what life's about. Following the rules, following what needs to be done. Follow what the Torah tells us, be a better, kinder, nicer person. You'd be surprised how many people will be attracted to you and you to them. God bless and the best of luck to all those that are trying to find it. God bless you. Thank you for coming.